Okay, so I've not been able to do one of these videos in a while. If you saw the last video I posted in the podcast, I explained why. But now I have a new iPad, so I'm going to start working out more problems. And I'm just going to start with this problem out of Taylor's, um, problem 7.8. So I'm taking MEC 2 next semester. I thought this would be a good thing for me to brush up on. And if you don't mind, before we start, please like and subscribe. More of these videos will be coming out now that I have a working iPad. So please do that. Okay. So, part A, let me set this on flatter ground, maybe. Part A, we need to write down the Lagrangian in terms of x1, x2, and their derivatives. And the masses are the same. So, the Lagrangian is your kinetic energy minus your potential energy. And we know that the potential energy is one half kx squared. But notice they want the Lagrangian in terms of these variables. So we don't want that as x, uh, but here it says that x is equal to x1 minus x2 minus l. So then the potential is one half k, and instead of x, we can say x1 minus x2 minus minus L squared, okay? The kinetic energy, now it mentions that it's confined to the x-axis. So one half mv squared, in this case, velocity has x, y, z components, but again, it's confined to just the x component, the x-axis, so this is just one half m and there's two particles, so we'll say x1 dot squared plus x2 dot squared, since there's two particles, but both are still in the x. So, okay, the Lagrangian is very easy then. We can see then that the Lagrangian is just going to be 1 half m x1 dot squared plus x2 dot squared minus one half k x1 minus x2 minus l squared. So this again is Lagrangian with the components that they want up above. x1, x2, x1 dot, x2 dot. Then for part B, rewrite the Lagrangian in terms of the new variables, capital X, which is one half X1 plus X2, okay, so just the center. And X, the extension, which was given above. And write down the two Lagrange equations for big X and little x. Okay, so if big X is this, if we take the time derivative, that'll be just the time derivative of the components. Okay. So just so I, you understand why we're doing this, they essentially want the Lagrangian in these terms. So they gave us X, and now we're finding out what X dot is. Um, X was given to us as um, X1 minus X2 minus L. So then if we take the time derivative, that'll just be X1 minus X2. And the length L, I think that's what L stands for, the length, yes that is a constant, so its derivative is just zero, okay? So now, if we look back up here, 
we want to rewrite your x1s and x2s in terms of what we have here. So just going to rewrite the first part. And that is just obviously x, little x. x1 minus x2. This part is just x. So I just replaced that with x squared. Don't want to forget that. So now what we need to do is we need to find an expression for x1 dot squared plus x2 dot squared. And I can see that from over here, 2 capital X dot equals X1 dot plus X2 dot. And if I square both sides, that's 4 X dot squared equals X1 dot squared plus X2 dot squared. And then of course, plus 2 X1 dot X2 dot. So that's kind of close, right? We just have this extra term here that we don't want. Okay? Well, notice if we take our x dot term over here and we square that, that's x1 dot squared plus x2 dot squared minus 2x1 x2 dot which also looks pretty similar to what we want uh, over here. This is what we're trying to substitute because we don't want x1 and x2 as a variable for a Lagrangian. Now I notice that if we add this and this together, four big x dot squared plus little x dot squared, that factor of 2 x1 dot x2 dot goes away and we just get 2 times x1 dot squared plus x2 dot squared or just 2 x dot squared plus 1 half x dot squared equals x1 dot squared plus x2 dot squared right which is uh, ultimately what we were looking for. So that's fantastic. And now we can substitute that in and our Lagrangian, which is now a function of big X, little x, the time derivative of big X and the time derivative of little x is one half M two big X dot squared plus one half little x dot squared minus one half k little x squared okay so that is now our new lagrangian um, in terms of the variables we want so now what we need to do is set up our solve our lagrangian using the euler lagrangian which again partial derivative of the lagrangian with respect to capital X is the time derivative of the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to the time derivative of big X. Okay? And our other one will be the same thing, but with little x. So these are our two differential equations. That we'll need to solve and then we can solve or uh, we'll be done with the question okay all right so if we take the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to big X well there is no big X so this will just be equal to zero which is also equal to the time derivative of the derivative of a Lagrangian with respect to x dot, which if we take the derivative 
with respect to x dot, well, that's just a power rule. Don't forget the one half m out front. So you just get two m big x dot, and the time derivative of that is obviously just two m x double dot. Which again, this is equal to zero. Which tells you that x double dot is obviously equal to zero. So x dot has to be some constant c1. And this is just basic separation of variables. I think I even have videos on this if this is something you're not comfortable with. Uh, but then finally, x of t is just c1 times t plus c2. Okay. So this is our first solution. For the second one, we're going to take the tie, the derivative of the Lagrangian with respect to x. And again, that needs to be equal to... Oh, let's go ahead and do that first. Where is it? Okay, so that's pretty easy, right? That's just going to be minus kx. And this will be equal to the time derivative of one half m x dot. Okay. Because mm -hmm. we do their time derivative of that, the two cancels, and then we have the one half m. So okay, we're good. Taking the time derivative of that, that is going to be one half m x double dot. And again, this is equal to minus kx. So x double dot is minus 2k over m times x. So I don't actually think I've gone over this in depth in a video on how to solve this differential equation. But intuitively, you have some function. And if you take its derivative twice, you get that same function back times some constant. Well, that sounds like a sine and cosine. So x of t is equal to c3 sine of 2k over m square root, because we take two derivatives, right, times t plus c4 cosine of 2k over m square root t. So when you take the two derivatives, the square goes away and you get this factor that we want uh, out front. Okay. And you can do a substitution where omega naught is 2k over m square root. And then this simplifies nicely to c3 sine of omega naught t plus c4 cosine of omega naught times t using that substitution there okay so that's how we go about the process um it's pretty straightforward just a little bit of algebra there at one point hopefully that makes sense if it did please leave a like and subscribe and i will post more videos in the future thank you